Those damn vegans with their darn cheeseburger put-downs. What is it that makes these vegans so arrogant? And I was trying to show off. Well, there's three people I want to cover here in this video. The first is the one who was always looking for the opportunity to mention he's a vegan. Here's a little bit of Cory Booker. Please welcome Senator Cory Booker, everyone. <laughs> Get on up here. How you doing, brother? Wow, look at the reception. This is a land of barbecue. It is. And you're a vegan. I am. What's that like? What's that like? How's that been for you? It's been a great experience for me, for a great for well-being. <laughs> My mom and dad, it may have caused some uh, trouble, but now they understand. And I'm uniquely qualified. I've gone up against uh, titans, bullies in my, through my New Jersey politics. In fact, I don't think anybody in this race has been through the kind of tough politics I've been through. There's even a documentary about it called Street Fight. Give me a break. This guy thinks he's so tough, so great. I'm happy to have those skills. Yeah. Okay, next. It is time for a generation of Americans to rise up again for an amoral economic system has turned short-term profits for huge multinational corporations into a false god. Yeah, Marianne Williamson is not exactly vegan, but she's well on her way, and she sure sounds like it. We need some radical truth-telling in the United States to sacrifice our moral leadership. We win this election not by showing the, the worst of who we are. You can't lead the people if you don't love the people, all of the people. And Tulsi Gabbard, she is such a show off that she doesn't even wait for the debate. She does a public workout that morning showing her buff arms that she's been concealing underneath those white suits. Starting out this Wednesday morning. So I know we're running on low sleep, low fuel. Today's gonna to be a big day, an important day. All we gotta do is continue to lead with our hearts and remember why we're doing what we're doing and who we're fighting for. I woke up feeling like this gonna be my day. I got that popping fire every step I take. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. Nobody has ascended to the White House that will bring more personal passion on this issue. I will fight this. What would your top individual rate be? This economy has got to work for everyone. And right now we know that it isn't. And it's gonna take all of us coming together to make sure that it does. Necesitamos incluir cada persona en el éxito de esta economía. Cada votar, ca cada votante necesitamos la representación y cada voz necesitamos escuchar. Everyone on this stage should say that we are going to give clemency to these 17,000 people. And I challenge you, don't just say big statements, back it up with details. I don't think the Democratic Party should be surprised that so many Americans believe yada, yada, yada. I will lead change on this issue because I have seen what the carnage creates in communities like mine because we forget national shootings, these, these mass shootings are tragedies but the majority of the homicide victims come from neighborhoods like mine. Senator Booker, I just want to ask, and on a, a slightly lighter note, uh, there's a photo of you looking at Beto O'Rourke as he is starting to speak in Spanish. You're giving him kind of amazing side eye, and I, I wonder if you've seen the photo, what was going through your mind in that moment, if you can remember. Uh, I can't really remember. Uh, I just knew he had laid a gauntlet down, and that, and, and I was talking a little bit with Castro. Both he and I knew, as people who can speak Spanish, that now we were going to bring it as well. I realized that there's a lot of bilingual people, some even <laughs> trilingual, in this race. Uh, Senator Booker, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. I think he I handled that, that well. The, the <laughs> language skills tomorrow night will yeah, be there all night. Yeah. He's got like seven Andrew languages. Yeah. I've never heard Kristen Jolie. It Jill sounds like Booker Andrew. was kind of mad that that uh, O'Rourke got there first, and as he said, he pulled it out first. I was going to do that. <laughs> you did that, and I'm I'm not happy about it. You know. This must be a moment where we as Democrats can begin to show that we can not only stake and stand our ground, but find common ground because we've got one shot to make Donald Trump a one-term president. And we cannot lose it by the way we talk about each other or demonize and degrade each other. And here's Tulsi practicing to kick Pete Buttigieg's butt.
A lot of people are saying that Pete kicked Tulsi's butt in the debate just because he had some line that he interrupted her with that sounded catchy. He was equating Trump meeting with Kim Jong-un with her meeting with Assad while she was trying to make the point that many presidents have met with leaders who've done really bad things here I can't mention in this video. Pete's line was not good because Kim Jong-un was not a recognized leader until Trump legitimized him. Do these fools still think we can win this war in the Middle East? It's unwinnable. It's been 60 years or something. And they think they can win it by not talking with the opposition? What a bunch of fools. These people deserve Trump. That's what they got. Meanwhile, at the top of the polls in the Democratic debate, we got Joe Biden, who's a complete doofus now. I don't know if he was always like this, but he's 70. The guy can hardly think and talk anymore. In this last debate, he basically said that only men are committing domestic violence, completely ignoring the reality. He actually said this super pandering line that men sh should not be hitting women. Well, guess what? It's already against the law. And what about men getting hit? Is that not as important? Oh, very interesting. And this guy's on the top of the polls, man. This guy makes gaffes every time he talks, which leads me to this, the gaff. He was asked, what can we do about all this male violence? Attacking women on the street, beating them up, punching them in the face. <laughs> and he says, we got to punch it out. He said it three times. People were laughing at him and he didn't get why. He said, we got to keep punching at it and punching at it. Yeah, I'd like to show you the clip. I don't want to waste my time getting it, but that is what he said. I know it's hard to believe. You can find it yourself. It's hard to believe. It sounds too, too strange to be true. He has to drop out right now, man. So yeah, the Democrats are deserving what they get. Are human beings ever gonna learn? And they're slandering Tulsi Gabbard all over the place. And the New York Times is even criticizing her white suit saying it's fringe and leaves a chill when Twitter responded by posting a whole bunch of pictures of Hillary, Melania, Michelle Obama, and a bunch of other Democrats wearing this white suit. <sighs> okay, let's check out some show-offs on the Republican side, <laughs> just for a laugh. Oh, and what a coincidence. These coincidences keep happening in my videos. They always happen. Speaking of white suits, <laughs> And, and men not being criticized. Only women are criticized for the way they're dressing. Let's check out the dance moves of Sean Spicer, one of Trump's best people. Well, it's well known that Republicans can't dance. That was joked about 30-something years ago on the show Give Me a Break. Nell Carter, she looks at the way Katie and her friends are dancing, really stiff. And she says, have you been hanging around with the Republicans? So let's see how the liberals can dance. But yeah, he probably had enough of Trump's lowly henchmen. What about Trump himself? He's got a big ego. What does he have to show off? Well, some people say he has great physical attributes. Check. 
this president's ass. I think people were referring to things like his large brain, but we haven't seen any sign of that. But I did find a clip that you probably have not seen. Remember when he had that 4th of July event where he rolled out the tanks, all the heavy artillery to show off? You know, it made the U.S. look like China or North Korea. And here's Trump bragging about that. It was a wonderful day for all Americans, and based on its tremendous success, we're just making the decision, and I think we can say we've made the decision to do it again next year, and maybe we can say for the foreseeable future. <laughs> just a nut. Listen to the people clapping. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is no, just... No, I know. He needs to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, somebody just needs to give him a baby bottle and burp him and put him on to bed. Jeez.